Good evening, this is Mae Russell in Carmel, California. This is tape number 381, and it's side one. This is March 23rd, 1979. Last week I uh, talked on side two of tape 380 on the book Alternative 3, and I'm going into that some more in detail on this tape. The bulk of this tape will be on that subject. And then next week we'll update the news. A lot of you are waiting for comments on Jonestown and the suicide of Michael Prokes. An update on Jonestown. Next week we'll talk about Michael Prokes, the role he played with Jim Jones, and an update on Pope John Paul the second one he's up to, and the Los Angeles Police Department arrest of Jim Jones, which is being suppressed, which was suppressed by the Los Angeles Police Department and the FBI. This is important because I believe Jim Jones worked with criminal conspiracy section of uh, Los Angeles Police Department and with the UCLA school that studied the causes of violent behavior, the CIA. I think Jones was a front for these groups for a long time, and the power that be in Los Angeles have been fighting to destroy and suppress information about the police police relationship of Jim Jones down in L.A. So next week we'll get into that. There are a few news items that I'll run through uh, quickly in case you missed them, and then we'll get on to Alternative 3 again. Um, there's an article March the 12th, 1979, Monday of this week. Documents that uh, have been released from the Central Intelligence Agency on the use of mind spies. You may have seen that. United Press International story that the CIA began using the Nazi uh, idea of uh, pressing ESP as a weapon. And this is a very important article in terms of my research or my perception because going back or in the early 50s, they turned to the possibility of extrasensory perception and turning it into, quotes, an atom bomb of espionage. And I think many of you know how I feel about psychic phenomena and ESP and that I feel very strongly that if enough people use powerful sources of information and feelings communicating with each other, such as we do on these tapes and other persons are doing around the country to control these forces of evil, that there is a weapon or a force here that has not been tapped by very many people. Now, the CIA knows about it, the Nazis know about it, and it even refers to Soviet ESP experiments. But very positive thinking um, is one of the things that keeps me from getting discouraged. Many of the researchers get down in the dumps and get depressed and get discouraged. But I know the power of uh, using your mind as a weapon. And uh, it's interesting to me that these documents, there's one dated April 8, 1952, which has been released uh, regarding ESP uh, being applied to matters of pure intelligence. They even wanted people with ESP to give information about where submarines were at a port or area, and there's another document here, January 31st, 1952, about the CIA use of ESP, that this knowledge is important, and it quotes the CIA, they said, the knowledge on ESP at this point was far in advance of the basic knowledge that was held on atomic energy and atomic weapons before the atom bomb was developed, the memo says. Now, these have been recently declassified documents that were gotten from the Freedom of Information, Act by the Church of Scientology, and I think that the ESP that I've used in my own research, uh, I haven't relied upon it, but I have uh, seen the solution to a problem the minute the crime was committed, such as the Chappaquiddick affair, the John Kennedy assassination, the Rockefeller murder, the Jonestown affair, and then if I collect all the information that is available from every source that I can get and put it together, it confirms the original solution of who was involved and how these um, crimes were committed. Now, the later crimes are easier to follow because of the years I spent, eight to nine years, of cross-filing the Warren Commission hearing. But as I said on one tape a while back, the solution to who killed John Kennedy came to me very clearly November 24, 1963. And then it was just a matter of spending 12 or 16 hours a day, every day for 15 years, and all the positions and people came into place, but this is an energy or force that has been put down because the people who use it and believe in it don't want you to have that same information. It's like suppressing the article that came out recently on how to build a hydrogen bomb. It was in a progressive newspaper. Uh, this has to be curtailed because the ordinary person can figure these things out when you're not supposed to. The government is supposed to get billions and billions of dollars of funds 
to come to a conclusion that a student can figure out and publish in an ordinary newspaper. So uh, the CIA refers to this experience and this energy as uh, greater or as great as the atomic bomb uh, in espionage. And I mention it now because it is important. And if you don't think you have that power, you have, and you have the power to direct and move people across the history board to counteract their forces. If you don't believe you have, then you can't. But if you believe you have that power, you can play your role in changing the course of history. There was a big controversy in Los Angeles just last year that is still going on because when people charged the Los Angeles Police Department with killing uh, various minorities and shredding their papers when lawsuits were to take place, um, there was a request for a grand jury to go into the file shredding case. And just last week, uh, there was a hearing, there was a petition of 100 people who had signed a petition, and they wanted the grand jury to probe why the police file shredding case took place. And they waited in court for their hearing. A judge, Richard Schauer, of the Los Angeles Superior Court, uh, didn't go to the hearing. He was uh, supposed to be there, and he sent a message that he was attending another meeting, and then he was going to visit a friend in the hospital. The assistant presiding judge, David E. Eagleson, I wouldn't come out of the chambers and hear the matter. He said that they would could put it off till the other judge appeared. And attorney Miguel Garcia kept the lawyers and supporters of this hearing waiting, and then they said that Judge Eagleson won't come out either. Another judge uh, who was in hiding uh, said that uh, uh, he wouldn't appear, Judge Shower, and he was in hiding, and he wouldn't come out. And his personal secretary said that she doesn't know where he is or where he'll be tomorrow. All the people that were involved in this hearing would not appear. No judges appeared, no attorneys, and the <coughs> question of the grand jury opening up the destruction of these important files, when they finally had proof or evidence of harassment and murders of the police department, all the files were shredded, and nobody in Los Angeles in the courts will even allow a hearing on the matter. That's how tightly the courts are controlled down there uh, regarding police crime. And again, that goes back to that book that I've referred to many times about the trials in Germany, the book put out by Seymour Melman on uh, the destruction of the court system, the assassination and the courts in collusion. And this is what you're seeing here. Also this week we learned that Patrick Gray probably won't be charged for his various illegal activities before and after Watergate and uh, because he's too high up in the FBI and to charge him would release national security interests so that uh, persons working with ITT and uh, Patrick Gray as assistant attorney general who stopped the investigations of murders in Los Angeles specifically and riots and violence and was involved with black bag jobs and suppression of evidence at Watergate he did D6 valuable information after defendants had been arrested to protect them and to protect his cohorts uh, Patrick Gray will get off charges because he's too high involved with the National Security Council, the CIA, and the FBI. That means that anybody working for Bechdel or ITT or Howard Hughes or Mr. Perot or any high-level uh, corporations, multinational corporations, or government agencies will never be prosecuted for crimes because they subpoena documents that are national security and on the basis of protecting national security, they're relieved of the crimes that they committed. One last uh, matter, oh, no, I have two others before we get to alternative three. Um, there came in the news this week a cell bank in New Jersey, uh, which I didn't know about before. Maybe you did. It, the institute took a place in 1972. It was an Associated Press story. Cell bank in New Jersey is researchers' clearinghouse. It's called the Institute for Medical Research. And, of course, I watched the state New Jersey because now that I've read much about IG Farben during World War I and World War II, they set up their western headquarters in the United States in New Jersey. This uh, cell bank has um, figures that there's 15 million Americans who are seriously affected by genetic diseases. There's 2,500 known hereditary ailments, 500 genetic disorders, and these cell samples are stored in 361 degree temperature. Um, the article that I have says the cell bank is meeting a long felt need in the scientific community. Among the billions of cells con contained in the bank, 250,000 glass ampules are samples 
from sufferers of ailments of cystic fibrosis, Tay-Sachs disease, Down syndrome, and so forth. And one of the problems, uh, when I think of Germany and exterminations and genetics, Interpol and the Mormon data banks is that people that have genetic defects that register there or cells are sent can be put onto computer cards and marked so that they are not the selected, say, to go uh, into whether it's space stations or genocide camps. I think the tagging of people sign up and let us check your cells and they have billions of cells here contained and the allegation 15 million Americans have hereditary diseases. Um, these kinds of institutes, the Germ Control Center down in Georgia, the Cell Bank in New Jersey, the Institute for Medical Research, is that a government institute? Is it a private institute? Is it put in by the um, chemical companies, the people manufacturing drugs and chemistry? I don't like the categorizing into what is supposed to be our benefit in separating or labeling everybody who has a genetic disease and saving these cells. I think this can be very dangerous, and I think many families know about hereditary diseases they have and sending off these billions of cells to an institute that was formed in 1972 is very dangerous. The years when Richard Nixon was in power from 69 uh, to the election 68, when he was inaugurated in 69, and then into 70, 71, 72, Watergate took place in June 72. The whole nucleus for a private police force run by the Pentagon to control public broadcasting, our health, our diseases, is terribly important, particularly since the Nixon CIA Watergate team were buying floor plans for convention centers down in Miami at the time of the uh, nomination. And um, the air conditioning plants can be ducked for diseases, for controlling diseases, for making vaccines, for having people get vaccines, the Legionnaire's disease, and uh, that type of thing. It's a very dangerous thing to have the government in medicine, and it'd be interesting to know if the Institute for Medical Research in New Jersey is any way linked to, say, the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, which is opening 12 satellite stations by communication around the country headquarters in Miami and Boston, or the Rockefeller Medical Institute, all with their DNA research and medical research, which, in quotes, is supposed to be good for us, but which these corporations have never done anything good for us before, and all of a sudden they're worried about our health. The cell mm -hmm. bank is in New Jersey. We have to look into that a little bit more. The U.S. Uh, government, the intelligence community, is arguing with Congress about their new charter, which will come about in six weeks. The Senate Intelligence Committee uh, is drawing some conditions for the CIA and what they call other intelligence agencies, and these are some of the things that they would want to write off that they can't do. And I think what Congress is telling them they can't do is very interesting in, in terms of what I say they've been doing and intend to do. Uh, what the Washington Post article says that I have here is that they would prohibit the CIA and other U.S. intelligence agencies from supporting international terrorist activities. That is, of course, terror on the right, or even a nucleus is the SLA CIA domestically. They would, this is international, which the SLA was international, actually. They would prevent them from causing mass destruction of property, from creating floods, from causing epidemics, from causing shortages of food and shortages of water, they would stop them from using illegal chemicals and biological weapons. There's also a suggestion that the CIA stop aiding foreign police or intelligence agencies that violate human rights. Uh, they're having trouble uh, agreeing with Congress and CIA on uh, this new control of the CIA because, in quotes, the officials acknowledge they don't, they do want to leave the door open for violent paramilitary operations, for example. Uh, they still want to continue with that, and there is a big controversy over how much the CIA should be controlled. On the basis of the overthrow of the Shah of Iran, they claim the CIA was weakened uh, by not having the information they needed, which is just a total lie. Of course, it's Henry Kissinger making this statement and being quoted, which is a total lie because everyone in the world knew how unhappy the people were with Iran, how the CIA was blamed for Savak, for the Shah, uh, the will of the people was being tormented and tortured and perverted, and the president was touting him as a great leader, spending the holidays over there in 
just literally ignoring the wishes of the people. The CIA knew the hatred and knew that Khomeini was being developed as an alternative or that there was going to be an overthrow, and it's a lie to say that they were caught by surprise. There is one other uh, item in the news every day, uh, constantly in the last week, that I don't want to pass off for a few weeks because I want you to follow it. It has to do with a South African scandal that's going on. Um, a member of the South African government now in London has in a vault locked up information of all kinds of scandals of South Africa. Now, a few weeks ago, I mentioned in regards to the Rockefeller death and the Iranian scandals, the information that's locked up on the bribery and the payment of our congressional members and the news media favoring Iran all along and paying off uh, our Congress. Our Congress is paid over by the Korean CIA, by the Howard Hughes organizations, by pu public uh, and private corporations and countries. And South Africa has a scandal similar to Watergate, which affects us right here in the United States. And the British Broadcasting recently had uh, Mr. Eshel Rohde, R-H-O-O-D-I-E, who's the central figure in all of this, talking about the scandal. And as I say, he has information locked up in a vault in England that all of us should have. But in the meantime, there are five allegations here that I want to run over quickly that were in the news. One is that South Africa was a major financial backer of Senator Roger Jepson of Iowa, the Republican who last year upset Dick Clark, one of South Africa's most persistent and influential American foes. So mark that on your book or calendar and watch the voting record of Senator Roger Jepson of Iowa as he steps us into World War III to support racist South Africa and uh, realize that he is just one person named in this scandal up to this point. The second allegation is that South Africa supplied a substantial share of capital that enabled John McGough to make a bid to purchase the Washington Star which wasn't successful, but he did buy the Sacramento Union. Now, how does that affect our own lives uh, in a way that's so subtle that many people can't appreciate it? But, for example, Station KZAP, that carried Dialogue Conspiracy for four years up in Sacramento, uh, put out a bulletin just last week that came. Uh, it says, 98.5 ZAP, a decade of innovative radio down the drain. What's happening? It said virtually all the best of the staff are off the air. They've been fired or quit. Public re affairs is reduced to nothing. Travis T. Hip and Women Waves is entirely gone. No women disc jockeys. Few good disc jockeys at all. And it, this brochure says contact the Federal Communications. And on the back, they have a list of people that advertise on KZAP, which is about 60 different corporations or individual businesses, uh, some national and they say complain to these people, the, the South City Honda, the Tower Records, and so forth. Now it's got a list of um, advertisers that is so huge. And the point is, if the South Africans can come in and buy a newspaper in Sacramento, such as the Sacramento Union, can they also have an investment in Sacramento in businesses that changes one of the few free radios in the United States from an FM station to just plain oversold uh, top 20 rock songs and fire all the progressive bordering on radical or controversial politicians so that there's no voice of opposition in the capital of California, which is a very important capital. And our universities invest money in South Africa. Our Senator Hayakawa is a lobbyist for South Africa and a newspaper in Sacramento is bought over by South Africa. Not only did we have an expose at the time of the Senator Church hearings in 1975-76 that there were 400 people in the news media that were linked to the Central Intelligence Agency, but we have this new information about the Iranian government paying over members of our news media and now the South African scandals that they can buy even small papers such as the Sacramento Union, which are important, and they're important, as I say, in terms of controlling the media around them. If they make the effort to buy the, the newspaper, you can be sure that they're going to hear the sound that comes over in the kind of news. This article on South Africa goes into large cash payments made to the American labor movement in 1977 so they wouldn't blockade uh, business to South Africa. And it says that South Africa had arrangements with British um, uh, conservatives, members of the parliament there, House of Commons, and the Japanese government 
and that they were involved in the establishment of news agencies in France and in Kenya and the Netherlands. Of course, I believe that the power of Prince Bernhardt and Queen Juliana of the Netherlands with Mr. Brzezinski and uh, Kissinger is pushing the weight of the United States over Europe. <clears throat> we'll do more about that in another week or two, the balance of power as America slinks, sinks into the sea. But it goes into the fact that Pretoria government gave Mr. McGough $11.5 million in which to buy newspapers. And that's, of course, the way I.G. Farben controlled the news media prior to World War II. And the major intelligence community can buy up and tie off the media, which is what has happened in this country and all around the world. And these documents coming now just support the way it is done and how the news media is controlled. Along those lines uh, came information of a political scandal in South Africa uh, that has been exposed of a family, a Robert Smith and his wife, that were murdered, and they were murdered um, by two Germans who were sent from England at the time of the 1977 general election down in Johannesburg, South Africa. The murders were paid $35,400 each, and uh, these persons, these contractors, flew in to Johannesburg and killed this politician and his wife and the mercenaries were supposed to have come from the British born Colonel Hoare H-O-A-R-E they called him Mad Mike at one time who lived in South Africa the Prime Minister of course in South Africa is issuing a strong statement such as we get at the time that John Kennedy is killed or Rockefeller is killed or any other major assassination don't make any connection between the Smith murders and the new information scandal that's coming out, there's, there should be no connection between, for example, Bobby Baker and Lyndon Johnson and the Kennedy assassination or various scandals that they have nothing to do with each other. An important thing about this uh, politician that was running for office, and I maintain that many politicians are murdered just on the eve of elections, that he's only one of a long list of hundreds, maybe thousands. One important thing was after the stabbing and the killing of Robert Smith and his wife, there was a note left on a refrigerator door with paint, letters, paint sprayed R-A-U-T-E-M in red spray paint, which led the police to think that it was a ritual killing, that it had something to do with um, guerrilla movement, and it was a ritual, and it would turn people away from professional killers with, in quotes, misleading clues. Now, that's the way there was death to the pigs written in blood, on the, refri on the door and refrigerator the house uh, where Sharon Tate was killed, which I <coughs> will not go into the details now, but which was to smear the black, the Black Panthers at the time, or Helder Skelder written in blood on the icebox to link the Sh Taren, uh, Sharon Tate murder and La Bianca murders to rock music, to the Beatles, the Helder Skelder. And we have those notorious diaries of Lee Harvey Oswald, Arthur Bremer, Sirhan Sirhan, to break away the killers to separate the real killers to mislead and of course the Jonestown messages uh, written uh, give the money to the communists after he died and the tapes about uh, communism the, the socialism that weren't available before with their multinational links to banks in Switzerland and the Bahamas and we'll go into that some more later but the point is that when these people died in South Africa at the time of the general election where a politician had a chance to be elected down there in Johannesburg, South Africa. They left these ritual letters to make it look like a ritual killing, which is nothing new. This has been going on a long time. And the same gentleman who has the tapes about the scandalous purchasing of politicians, congressmen, the United States Congress, news media, and newspapers all over the world has information on the contract murder to kill these people in an election year and the modus operandi is always the same, blame the other people, leave incriminating evidence, get rid of politicians during the election, involving contract Germans sent from England, uh, and then putting the money back into the United States Congress and news media, hopefully to cover the crime. Now back to the book Alternative 3. For those of you who have this tape and don't have the one week before, I suggest that you get tape number 380 the second side where I go into this book is by Leslie Watkins and it's published in England and I've spent some time this last week trying to find out if the book is fiction or non-fiction and it's very difficult to separate uh, the line I want somehow to believe that there is a grain of truth in this because running through it are a lot of actual facts and truth 
but whether this is a book that every point of it is fiction or non-fiction, I can't be sure yet. And similar to the book The Man Who Cried I Am by uh, John Williams that came out with the King Alfred plan in it, the book was written as fiction. It was about the death of Malcolm X who got wind of the plan to extermin exterminate all blacks in the United States. And uh, I got a hold of a copy of the King Alfred plan, which seems to be from the National Security Council, which didn't come from the book. And the project of getting rid of the blacks, points one to ten on down the line, are all taking place exactly as it said in the book. And people never took the book seriously at the time. We did one tape on that. You can refer to that tape on the Metrocast and the King Alfred plan if you want it. But again, this book, um, I can't be sure yet, and I've been trying to check out some of the features. The main point of this book, uh, Alternative 3, I'll run down for you again and then get into some more specifics on it. Uh, the main allegations are that the United States and the Soviet Union are working together and have for many years on a joint space project, that the first moon landing in the United States in July 69 was not the first moon landing, that there were Russian ships and buildings up there a long time before they got there, that there have been moon flights and other spaceships going back and forth and satellite stations that have been built up in space for a long time, that scientists are getting ready to colonize uh, the uh, outer space areas because the Earth cannot contain the poisons and pollutions in the mass population. This book uh, goes on to say that 200,000 people are born every day, and that's 34 million a year. That there's 360 million tons of carbon dioxide alone that stays up, and the aerospray aerosp cans have a half a million metric tons of fluorocarbons each year that can never disintegrate. They also say that the population has to be hand controlled and selected and that the space scientists will use two groups of people select individuals professionals and scientists and the other group are called batch consignment which is slave labor the slaves would be used for 15 years would be strong from all races and colors and depending upon their physical strength again that might have to do with selecting genetic hereditary diseases getting rid of the weak or the disease through the data banks and the, uh, then they would be disposable. At the end of 15 years, they're disposable. They're not to be used, and there's no space for them. There's no housing or need for them. Uh, the other, another allegation is that the people to be sent there or to be used as slaves either way are being programmed and tested right now, and that's the purpose of the 25 years so far of the CIO, CIA and National Institute of Mental Health and Government Agencies on Mind Control. Uh, the project is A, to desex individuals that, so that they not only don't reproduce because you can carry enough cells up there in it, the size of an egg to reproduce all the people you want on planet Earth. You don't need people procreating, but you do away with sexual drives, which does away with a lot of anxiety. I suppose it's the same principle the Catholic Church of having nuns and priests not getting high, hung up with the sexual needs or drives when you're celibate. You can run other people's lives and direct them. I guess that kind of thinking, taking away the emotional needs. And then the other uh, purpose of mind control programs is to take away personalities and individualities and make them all the same. On the other side of this tape, because we're just about running out of space, I'll go into a few more of the allegations, and then I'll compare them to just the news of this week and see if we read the news differently. Once we get a hold of a manuscript or book, then we have to train our minds to look in a different direction and see if we haven't been missing some of these points all along, and it may be that we have, and we should be looking at the news carefully regarding the space program. 